we have introduced the notion of topology on a given set X. And our members of two are basically declared as open sets. But there are various ways of characterizing this notion. See, for example, one can use the notion of closeness also to understand the topological notions. Let us discuss a little bit about that. Suppose we are given with a topological space X2. All the members of tau, we know that they are declared as open sets. So we define a subset A of X is said to be closed. I mean closed in X obviously. Openness and closeness is always relative as I mentioned. If the complement is open, that is if X minus A is open, that is X minus A should be a member in two. So the complementary, through that complementary way, one can define the notion of closeness. So uh, one can uh, look at our experience from metric spaces. For example, one can just look at the real number system with usual topology. If X is taken as R with usual topology and consider A uh, as the set uh, for example, minus 1 to plus 1, the closed bounded interval minus 1 to plus 1. One can check whether it is closed with respect to the usual topology. It's easy to look at because A, if you are marking it as minus 1 to plus 1, the closed bounded interval in that sense, it is indeed going to be a closed set with respect to the topological notion. Because just look at the complement. Complement actually consist of two parts minus infinity to min minus 1 open union 1 to infinity so this is what is the complement of a either sometimes i may use a complement or x minus a to denote the complements so this is what is the complement it is we know that uh, this is obviously an open set so a is going to be a closer subset of r in this case In fact, uh, moment's thought will reveal you that it's a metric topology. So if you are considering the closed ball of radius 1 about 0, that is what is declared as A. That is true in general. You work with a metric space. In the metric space, uh, if x tau is a metric space, that is tau is induced from a metric, one can uh, give the notion of closed balls. Closed balls will define in such a way that something like y see start with any x in our x. X instead of x2, I may write x d because this is a metric space. This metric space induces a topology. So always there is an induced topology. That is what is mentioned as tone. Now fix any x in x, then consider all y in x such that distance between x and y is up to R for some positive R. This is what is the meaning of a closed ball in a metric space. I am leaving it as an exercise to see that this A, by definition I am making like this a closed ball, centered at X with radius R is indeed a closed set. Just look at the complement and verify it. Just use the definition and verify it. But whenever we are defining closed sets like this, there is a little bit of confusion because they are complementary ideas. Most important things to be noted is that, see, for any topological space X, X is open by definition, of, uh, through openness if you are moving it up. Phi is also available in 2, so its complement is coming as x, so x is also going to be closed. Similarly for empty set. So in any topological space, the whole space as well as empty sets are going to be simultaneously both open as well as closed. We can say open. So it may exist. Even some subsets neither be open nor be closed. Even the real line, if you are looking some uh, sets like that, 
we can actually say that it is neither open nor closed something like this maybe sometimes you can call uh, okay that is the easiest way so a b for example if i'm like in an interval like this you can't say that it is an open subset either you can say that it is open or you can say that it is closed so all these things we have to take uh, in take for take it for granted all these kind of examples are available in other, even in matrix cases so what are the necessary properties or characterization later comes with closed sets that's what you can look so closeness a set is f is set to be closed provided its complement you are looking at it, it is going to be open as you have seen in any topological space full space as well as empty set are always going to be closed sets also so a moment's thought will reveal the thing see our toe suppose we are considering with the topological space x2 and uh, first axiom actually guarantees x and phi are in two which implies phi and x are in the closed sets collection so let me denote closed sets by c with the family of all closed sets with respect to these two then immediately it follows that empty set as well as x are available in c now the other two axioms which means see once tau is the defining conditions of tau will guarantee that it is closed under arbitrary unions so while moving through de morgan one can just see that c is going to be closed under arbitrary intersections very similar thing will happen for i mean closeness under finite intersections for tau so while revealing on c i mean the closed sets collection if you are looking at it is going to be closed under finite unions these things are easy to observe so how will you get this just formally you will write it let c be a collection of all closed sets in a topological space x2 then c has the following properties first one we have already discussed empty set as well as x are going to be closed in x they are members in c second and third they are evolving out of the second and third axiom from the topological notion of openness c is closed under arbitrary intersections how to do that see that's uh, in some sense is very easy just look at a collection an arbitrary collection f alpha i may write alpha is some indexing set in indexing set lambda this is a family of closed sets now look for the we have to look for the intersection of these fellows arbitrary intersection of these fellows but once they are closed this immediately says that their complements are going to be open which in turn say that f com f alpha complement if i'm using like this or i can use x minus f alpha also which is convenient for you you can use it so f alpha complement are going to be open in x now to say that intersection of f alpha alpha is in is going to be closed it's again going to be closed that is the meaning of c is closed under arbitrary intersections so to look at this i can just go for its complement so i'm looking for its complement that is x minus this fellow is going to be the unions of complements that is it takes through the de morgan's like this so what does it mean now each f alpha complement is going to be open arbitrary unions of open sets are going to be open so this fellow is going to be open its complement that is what is going to be intersection f alpha alpha in lambda this fellow is going to be closed so it guarantees that c is closed under arbitrary intersections very similar application with the de morgan will guarantee that c is closed under finite unions 
so this is uh, fundamentally an important thing just a transition of the notion of openness to closeness but uh, why these things are important as i mentioned at the beginning this is another way of looking topology because once you have a collection c it's a family of subsets of x a given set x is supplied it actually gives a way to generate a topology as these members i mean the members of in c are precisely going to be the closer setting so that actually characterizes topology that is powerful to define topology or generate a topology out of it so the converse part is really important that is what we can look that is the most important part of that thing given any set x c b a sub collection of p of x which satisfies these three properties that is empty set and the full set closeness under arbitrary intersection and closeness under finite union that is enough for us to get a unique topology to on x for which this c is going to be is the closed subsets of x so let us look at and see the one side uh, this straight forward side we have done and the reverse side is coming into the picture now but uh, things are easy to look at see x is the given set c is satisfying all the three so how to define your toy is almost clear just look at the complements so you define toy as consisting of all the complements what are available in c so this consists of all b i can say what should be the b in subset of x such that the complement you have to look at x minus b should be available in c this precisely gives you whatever be the things asked to prove is very easy to observe is the defining condition to be to just uh, sit and see that this toy is indeed a topology i mean then uh, x toy is going to be the topological space is in our previous notation and toy with respect to that toy you can define what is our closed set that coincides with c so these are easy things to observe so once you are looking at closed sets like this uh what you have observed from this theorem is that this is another way of understanding topology so either a primitive notion of open sets can be used to enter into the world of topology or one can use a primitive term of closeness also so once you are looking at a set x a given set x and look at any subset of it that is let me say a obviously x is a closed subset x is open as well as closed if x is a cube with a topology now uh, whenever you are looking at uh, closed sets containing a x is obviously a choice but it is uh, as we know c is closed under arbitrary intersection consider all closed sets containing a and the importance go for the smallest closed set containing a and that we call it as the closure of a so in a topological space x a is any subset of x we define the closure of this set a as the intersection of all closed set containing a formally speaking this is this becomes the definition once you are taking any subset a a either you can write it as the notation flow closure as a bar or if some confusion is about the topology a bar with respect to to you can write or some somebody will use closure of a also cl of a or c of a see these things are also uh, yeah, very useful see what you are doing to do what you are going to do a is any given set a closure is defined how it is defined that is defined as the intersection of some collection what is that collection 
you consider all c subset of x c is closed it should be a closed set moreover that c should contain your a so containing a take all closed sets take the intersection that is a what is the intersection of our closed sets containing that is the notation of like this so for each a where a lies from power set of x what is association ship you are giving closure as again a subset so a closure is again uh, lies in p of x so ideally what closure is doing is just like as a map a function it defines a function so this taking closure defines a function in that way if you are denoting maybe you can write c or cl so what happens is each a i will assign c of a which i can denote either this or the other so it serves as a function later we will call that it's an operator so on the power set of x it operates closure actually can be seen as a function from p of x to p of x which takes a to a closure so once you are viewing that these kind of notations may be more profitable from that point of view it is nice to look at what are the basic uh, properties of a closure operator let us have a look on that also see in terms of closer set is easy to look at and the following theorem is highly important we are working with a topological space x x2 and uh, five properties we will state it so it, uh, the first one says that a closure is a closed subset of x a closure is always closed but it is easy to observe why a closure is the intersection of all closed sets containing it since the property of closed sets guarantees that intersection is again going to be a closed set so this is trivially coming up the second part is also like that it is the smallest closed subset of x containing e because you are taking intersection of all closed sets like that so what is going to happen is you take any closed set in x let me see i may denote then by definition this a closure should sit inside c so the first part is trivial second part is also coming very naturally as we know that empty set if you are going for the uh, smallest closed subset containing that value that is self phi so phi closure is going to be phi that is the second one now look at the third one it says a is closed if and only if a closure is same as that of a suppose a is closed in x right uh, a closure stands for what it's basically the smallest closed set containing a which means once you assume a is closed a closure must be a it is clear conversely you suppose that a closure is equal to a then what happens since a closure is always a closed set being the intersection of closed sets a itself is going to be closed so these are easy consequences of the thing but actually it gives you what are the closed sets so closed sets in a topological space are nothing other than that the closure coincides with itself so that is an important information anyway uh, because once you are considering x and take any a a closure is uh, containing a but once a is same as that of his a closure then such a set must be closed and closed sets are precisely which satisfies a equals a closure it's a, a good hint to use later also now uh, we can just apply this uh, third one to understand four the fourth one is says that double closure which means a closure closure that is what it's written here this is actually a closure closure that is coinciding with a closure which means uh, the closure of closure is the closure itself so if i am just denoting the notation is also beautiful because 
t as a function from p of x to p of x it works where take any a here c of a stands for mean image of a under the closure operation operator they are going to operate as i mentioned this is a closure so in that level it says that the composition c again with c that is c of c of a that coincide with c of a that is what it says so this is how it works which means usually we uh, write it as idempotent property they are called idempotent idempotency c square is going to be coinciding with that c right so that is the composition of function c c c of a means functional level is c circle c that's all so uh, that's also useful from that point of view so a closure closure coincides with a closure but it's easy to observe because a closure closure is obviously a closed research containing a closure it's always closed so a closure a closure is a closed research right so closure or closure just using the previous theorem a some set is closed depend only if the closure is same as that of it that is the same thing happen a closure uh, see a closure is a closed set so its closure always will be closed which means it should be coincide with a closure that's all so it also follows very easily now what about the last one last one is a union b closure closure of a union b that is take a union take closure so closure of c of a union b you are trying to look at that is same as c of a union b of b so at least it says uh, for two sets you take the closure the unions of the corresponding closure inductively once you can go for finitely many so uh, we have to look at the proof quickly so some part is easy to observe see a is always sitting inside a closure as you have mentioned many times b is also sitting inside b closure which immediately gives you a union b so theoretically sit inside a closure union b closure but a closure union b closure is a closed research it contains a as well as b so a union b is also inside this so this is a closed research containing the set a union b but what about a union b closure it is the smallest closed research containing a union b so automatically this implies definition takes you that a union b closure itself is sitting inside a union a closure union b closure so one side is over so say union b closure should be equal to a closure union b closure one side is open what about the other side uh, to understand it Uh, generality is always true a1 subset of a2 it always implies a1 closure subset of a2 closure this one can prove it i'm leaving it as an exercise a1 sitting inside a2 then a1 closure also sitting inside a2 just use that you will get it easily because a is a part of a union b b is also a part of a union b together it will give a closure is a part of a union b closure just from here you get that a union b closure and b closure also sitting inside a union b closure now clearly then it follows that a closure union b closure is also sitting inside a union b closure so these together will Give that equality. So it behaves. I mean, closure operator behaves well with or compatible with finite unions. That's what it says. So let us uh, look back in the operator level. What all these propositions says. Just you can uh, recapture what you have mentioned from the beginning onwards. If you are considering the closure as an operator on P of X. uh the second one for example uh, is a restatement that c i am considering c for the time being c stands for or phi i can write whatever it is so let me write it at phi now phi of 
is a mapping from p of x to p of x and how it is defined any subset here of x is mapped onto its closure that is what phi has to do that is uh, such a phi we are going to call as operator it's a closure operator i can call now the closure operator i am marking on this topological space phi is not a good notation of usually i have to change it so i will write it as theta because it may confuse you so i may write theta so theta may be the closure operator so theta works from p of x to p of x it takes any set a to its closure so theta of a i mean a closure so just look at the 2 3 4 5 and etc especially what 2 says in terms of theta the operator closure operator theta of phi theta of the empty set i mean is phi itself that is what it says so it says that as a function this empty set is going to be uh, invariant under this operation so it's a fixed set point that is what it says right then what about 3 3 says a is closed if and only if a closure is a so in terms of this operator language if i'm rewriting a is closed if and only if theta of a is a so as i said before theta of a is a means a is a fixed point for theta you can simply call that it's invariant under that so theta a is a fixed point of theta so a is closed implies a is a fixed point and vice versa because if a is a fixed point that guarantees a is closed so this says that this part actually says that closed sets are going to be the fixed points for this operator three as i mentioned before it's an idempotency theta is idempotent theta square is coming with theta that's all that's all that's also a good language in functions finally the fourth one says that this theta is commuting with finite union from two you can extend so you will be getting like that so as far as an operator theta it stands for taking the closure uh, uh, classically it is called kuratowski's closure operator so this becomes an operator on p of x and all these laws can be restated in terms of that but then what is uh, the fancy thing is that see this these are properties for the closure operator or kuratowski's closure operator in a topological space but in fact this is another window to describe topology on as a given set so uh, let us view that which means see in terms of this operator we have almost stated if theta is any p of x to p of x uh, operator uh, we have uh, especially the uh, previous one guarantees especially two three two four and five if we are looking at uh, that is clearly given by these fellows two three and four that's simply like that but uh, i have another property an extra property for theta is available for me that is one of the best thing which, which i am going to recreate my topology in general so that is the fancy side see we know that in a topological space 2, 3 and 4 they are coming as properties but from that 2, 3, 4 in terms of this operator I am reframing as a function and 
one more property i am giving it which i am writing it as expansive property then such an operator is enough to generate unique topology so that is another window to view topology more precisely the closure operator satisfies all these properties once you have these four properties it actually gives back a topology for which my theta is going to be the operator i mean the kuratowski is closure operator so that side is very very important that we can so the importance of the theorem is clear it says this in this language so it says take let you consider any theta any function any operator from the power set of power on the power set of x for which one it says is an expansive operator that is you take a and theta of a is the image of that that should be expansive which means a should be inside theta of a here a is subset of a closure that you know on the other side so we have to assume it here so it should be an expansive operator for any subset of x a is always sitting inside theta of a that additionally you have to assume then from the previous proposition it is clear what you have to we know that uh, fixed points of uh, our the theta was uh, the closest before so just use that property you assume that theta is simply an operator it takes a to theta of a if it is expansive secondly phi is a fixed point which means theta of your phi should be phi itself and theta is idempotent as you have mentioned twice if it operates theta theta it has to come with theta again so idempotency and if it commutes with the finite unions with all these properties we can always get a unique topology row on x where this theta this op, this is coinciding with the closure operator more precisely the kuratowski is closure operator associated with so the other side is clear any closure operator always having the all these properties so the proof is uh, almost routine uh, so how to get back the topology to uh, prescription is uh, also can be guessed because you have to get a kuratowski's uh, closure operator from this so somehow the only thing is what should be the topology topology can be analyzed once you know about closed sets or closures so taking closures are coming into the picture here so precisely you have to define the closure in such a way so for any a the idea is nothing other than that uh, a closure should be you remember what is a closure in original notation so for any a in x a closure if you are trying to define that it takes the whole thing so you have to consider a closure to be the smallest closed set containing a so define a closure in this situation as the intersection of those subsets of x which take care of a that is a sitting inside b and what you can use is this idea that is fixed points that is theta of your b should be b so take all the fixed points here which take care of a such b is you consider take the intersection mark it as a closure so that mapping that association ship actually give the operator uh, or how to work with this conditions to generate a to that is that so this part is important how you are doing it so there are we have seen two more ways of analyzing or characterizing topology even though we have navally started with open sets but closeness also is enough to understand topology equally operator closure operator is another way of looking at there are equivalent concepts more more and more more concepts than this maybe in the next session we will talk about interiors and that also may give you boundary may give you nearness may give you so many ways are there to understand this so before looking such things let me just define one more concept which is 
density. So work with a topological space X, a subset A of X, we are going to call it as a dense subset. Once you are taking the closure of that A, A closure is the smallest closed set containing A that you know. So once you are A is sitting inside A closure, that is also for given for us. So once you are looking at the closure, that coincides with A. Then we say that such a set is a dense subset of X. So in a topological space, A is dense means X can be approximated from a is vaguely because just to take the closure you will be getting the full of x topologically you can achieve everything in x from a that is what what it says so this is having uh, giving more nice visualization once you are working in metric spaces sequences and uh, all such things but here we'll restrict ourselves with the general definition a a subset of x it is said to be a dense subset of x provided this closure is going to be the full of x. We know what are what is a closure, the smallest closest set containing a. So let us uh, try to describe or characterize dense subsets. As I mentioned, topologically everything can be achieved in x from a, that is what it says. So in another in other words, it says you take an open set, any open set, you take an any open set, you in X, uh, that has to give a non trivial intersection with A. That is what is going to come by saying that A is dense. So, we will restate it formally. A subset A of a space X is said to be, is going to be dense in X. If and only if it is necessary and sufficient that you take any subset B of X, any open non-empty subset of X, B is non-empty as well as it is open, it has to give a non-trivial intersection. That is A intersection B has to be not equal to 5. Always it intersects with that. So it has to get a once every open non-empty open subset intersects with A non-trivially, it guarantees A is going to be dense in X and conversely A is dense in X, then every non-empty open subset of X should intersect non-trivially. The proof is uh, very fine, very nice and uh, uh, beautiful. Let us look at the necessary part. Suppose A is dense in X. A is dense means we can use the definition closure is going to be coinciding with A. That's all. A, a closure is going to be the full of X. That is what it means. Now, uh, just start with any B, a non empty B, uh, on an open set as given, open in X. What you have to show? Then B must intersect with A non trivially. So in A intersection B is not equal to 5. Suppose on the contrary that A intersection B equals empty. Then what, what it says? Two sets are disjoint. So one leaves the complement of the other. So with this means A should leave inside B complement. I am writing this notation for the time being B complement BC. But then it says what? A is sitting inside B complement. A is sitting in B complement means A closure, also sitting inside B complement closure. But B complement is how? B is open. Complement, B complement is closed. So B complement closure is same as B complement. B is given to be an open set. So A closure is sitting inside B complement. Remember that. So what about B complement? This implies B complement is a proper subset of X. Right? Once B complement is a proper subset of X, it says what? Then A, clo a closure, what it happens? A closure is inside here. So A closure 
is not going to be the full of x that is what it says the say closure take uh, is inside this b complement once b complement is a proper fellow the say closure is going to be the cannot be the full of x this gives a contradiction of this so the necessary part is o a is dense then every non empty subset of x must intersect a non trivially let us look at the sufficiency um that is more or less easier transparent so the sufficiency part you are assuming that every non empty subset meets a non trivially once a meets every non empty subset of x the only closed set containing a is x right every non empty subset is going to meet x so the only closed set containing a is x only full x only which says a closure coincides with x which says a is dense x that is our view it's a very beautiful uh, proof so moral is that density of a subset in a topological space gives all information of x topologically any open set uh, in x a non non empty open set must do non trivial intersection with you will get everything from it all the pictures from it that is what it says uh, we have worked out uh, this notion of density in special cases of metric spaces especially Uh, real numbers complex numbers all systems so look at our uh, fa very familiar topological space r is the to is given to be the standard topology or the usual topology now on r consider q the rational set of rationals so set of rationals are indeed going to be dense in r is clear from this above theorem because you take any open set any open set in r u u is any open non empty open set in r then definitely you must contain an interval definitely right a bounded open interval definitely should be inside this any interval such interval should contain q so non trivial intersection is clear so it says that q is a dense subset of r very similar or same argument you can apply it for the complement part that is a irrational part also the set of irrationals in r also going to be dense either you can understand the topological notions from q or from irrational set but q situation is much more easier it is handy it is just a countable in number but such conveniences are there even it's a good exercise if you are trying uh, changing the topology here to the semi open interval topology so it's an exercise for this kind of things r you take with semi open interval topology and again check whether rationals or irrationals how whether they are dense in that see because density depends on the topology what you are going to do so uh, just try is an uh, exercise 